we're going to be solving problems that involve upthrust and Archimedes principle. And here's the first question. As the object is fully submerged, then the volume of the water displaced by the object is equal to the volume of the object. And from Archimedes' principle, we can say upthrust equals the weight of the water displaced, where weight equals mg, and the mass is equal to the density times the volume of the water displaced. So if we substitute in the values for density, volume, and g, we get an upthrust of 2,450 newtons. And this is question two. The forces acting on the ice cube is the weight of the ice cube and the upthrust. And so as the ice cube is floating, the upthrust will equal the weight of the ice cube. And from Archimedes' principle, we can say the upthrust is equal to the weight of the water displaced. So the weight of the ice cube will equal to the weight of the water displaced. And if we rearrange this equation to make the volume of the water displaced the subject, then that will equal the density of the ice cube multiplied by the ice cube's volume divided by the density of the water. See, g's cancel. They're on both sides of the equation. And if we substitute in these values, where it's important to convert the volume of the ice cube, which is in centimetres cubed, into SI units, that is metres cubed. So we need to divide that by 100 cubed. Then we get the volume of water displaced to be 2.16 times 10 to the minus 6 metres cubed, or 2.16 centimetres cubed. Question 3. For the metal block that's suspended in air, then the Newton meter reading will equal the weight of the block. We'll assume that the upthrust of the metal block in air is negligible. So the weight of the metal block is 0.21 newtons. And when the metal block is fully submerged in water, then the Newton meter reading plus the upthrust will equal the weight of the metal block. And so the upthrust on the metal block is equal to its weight minus the Newton meter reading in water. So that gives an upthrust of 0.02 Newtons. For question four, we can use the information from question three to determine the density of the metal block. So using Archimedes' principle, where upthrust is equal to the weight of the water displaced, we can get the volume of the water displaced, which is equal to the upthrust divided by the density of water divided by g. And if we substitute in those values, we get the volume of water displaced is equal to 2.04 times 10 to the minus 6 meters cubed. And we know when the block is fully submerged, the volume of the metal block will equal to the volume of the water displaced. So we can get the density of the metal block, which is the mass of the metal block divided by its volume. And so its mass is its weight divided by 9.8 and then divided by the volume of the metal block, which is equal to the volume of the water displaced. And that gives the density of the metal block to equal 1.05 times 10 to the 4 kilograms per meters cubed. Question 5. To determine the apparent weight of an object, that is its weight in water, then it will equal to its weight minus the upthrust. So first of all, to determine the upthrust, 
we need to know the volume of the steel block and that will be equal to its mass divided by the density. So if we substitute in those values, we get the volume of the block to be 2.69 times 10 to the minus 6 metres cubed. And we know that when the object is fully submerged, then the volume of the block will equal to the volume of the water displaced. And from Archimedes' principle, the upthrust equals the weight of the water displaced, which is the density of water times the volume of water displaced, which is the volume of the block, times by g. And that gives an upthrust of 0 0.0264 newtons. So the apparent weight of the block is equal to its weight, mg, minus the upthrust, and is equal to 0.18 newtons. And for question six, to determine the resultant force on the balloon, it is equal to its upthrust minus its weight. So first we need to determine the upthrust on the balloon. And so the volume of air displaced by the balloon will equal the volume of the balloon. And so upthrust, which equals the weight of the air displaced, will equal the density of the air multiplied by the volume of the air displaced, which is the volume of the balloon, multiplied by g. And that gives an upthrust of 0.0235 newtons. To determine the weight of the balloon, we need the weight of the empty balloon plus the weight of the helium that is inside. So the weight of the empty balloon is its mass, which is 1.5 grams, which we need to convert into kgs. So that is divide by 1,000, multiplied by 9.8. And then the weight of the helium is the density of helium times the volume of the helium, multiplied by g 9.8 and so that gives the total weight of the balloon is equal to 0 0.0178 newtons and so the resultant force which is equal to the upthrust minus the weight of the balloon is equal to 5.7 times 10 to the minus 3 newtons